Cyclone possibilities in the Pacific and Caribbean on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for November 9th. Well, we have no active tropical cyclones at this time, so one might suggest that it is currently quiet, but there are several systems that bear monitoring over the next few days, all with low chances of development at the moment, but that could change as we go further on down the line. And they're in several different locations as well. We have marked the Caribbean disturbance now, a 10% chance next week for development uh, in the southern part of the Caribbean, not far from the coast of Nicaragua. And it eventually it may turn northwards and then go on to affect some of the greater Antilles. GFS, of course, being the main um, one that's forecasting that. No other model's really on board yet. 20% chance still for this Eastern Pacific system, which is behind what was formerly uh, Tropical Storm at Pillar. Day 178 of hurricane season there, and things are winding down. In the Western Pacific, we've still got this 20% chance for an area of interest there as well. It's not looking very good at the moment, uh, but there is still a chance that it could become a tropical cyclone, but still uh, any development is probably going to be fleeting. And in the North Indian Ocean, we have no areas of interest right now, but worth pointing out, enhanced rainfall over southern India, Sri Lanka, and in parts of northern Sumatra and also in the southern Indochina region, Cambodia and southern Vietnam. But no active tropical storms. In the southern hemisphere we've got this one area of interest still, 20% chance near the Solomon Islands. Models have backed off a little bit on it so we're not quite as sure that it's going to form as we were perhaps yesterday and still we're giving it only a 20% chance, it is a few days away still. So let's look at satellite imagery. First of all, the Eastern Pacific. You can still see on the left-hand side a little bit of swirliness you saw from that system there. That was X-Pillar. And this is the other one that we're actively tracking right now, that 20% chance that we're giving. And you can see here it's showing signs of weak rotation and certainly got quite a bit of convection going. Well, here's the Western Pacific system. It's located currently to the south-southwest of the Marshall Islands. And it's not got very much going for it at the moment. Uh, convection is pretty poor. Um, rotation isn't looking particularly good either at this point. But things could change quite quickly over the course of the next few days. And it could develop a uh, brief tropical cyclone out of it. And we can also look at radar imagery from the Marshall Islands. Uh, the, store, the system itself is to the south of this radar scope, but you can see some of what it's producing in this wider area of uh, disturbed weather, which is causing quite a bit of rainfall. Now this is the South Pacific, this system that we've been watching, and it's still, well I'm still not convinced that this is actually the system that will form. Um, I don't think the low pressure um, centre has yet formed, and might do so in about a day or two. And then it will start moving towards the southeast, passing by the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu, and latest indications show that it could reach Fiji as a weak tropical storm. <clears throat> Sea surface temperatures are still uh, fairly decent in the eastern Pacific, similar to what they were yesterday off the coast of Mexico and all the way up the Gulf of California, still got some decent numbers. In the Atlantic, really cooling down in some parts now, you can see some of the northern Bahamas uh, falling below 26 degrees Celsius. The Caribbean though is still quite hot, especially between Haiti and Jamaica, over 30 degrees Celsius there, and still quite warm out over the open ocean as well. In the Western Pacific, it's the lower latitudes, of course, that are the warmest, as it is usually. Um, over large parts of the Philippine Sea and the South China Sea, still well above 30 degrees Celsius, including where that invest is right now near the Marshall Islands towards the right-hand side. And you can see those conditions still looking pretty good for it. And the North Indian Ocean uh, showing some good temperatures still in the eastern part of the Bay of Bengal and also in the eastern Arabian Sea with temperatures above 28 degrees generally, especially further east. Southwest Indian Ocean looking very good off the coast of Madagascar, 26 degrees off Mauritius. And around Australia, getting really warm now, up to the close to 32 degrees off the coast of Western Australia, Gulf of Carpentaria following 
behind. And in the South Pacific, really warming up there as well, definitely around Fiji and Vanuatu and creeping closer to New Caledonia. Compared to average, it's the South China Sea that's much warmer than usual, 3 degrees above average probably. The Western Pacific generally is a little bit above. The Eastern Pacific, a bit hit and miss. The Atlantic, uh, certainly the Caribbean is still looking good, as well as the open oceans of the subtropics compared to average. Southwest Indian Ocean, very warm between Mauritius and Rodrigues, and in the South Pacific, one or two slightly warm spots near where this system is. Oceanic heat content is still thriving in parts of the Caribbean, uh, the south of Jamaica and Haiti particularly. If that system ended up over there, it could end up getting into a lot of energy. Eastern Pacific still has one or two blobs left, and in the Western Pacific there, there's still quite a corridor of uh, energy uh, near the Philippines and heading up towards Guam. So here's what the GFS has in store then, and uh, we're first looking at uh, that system that we've been monitoring at 20% and the Atlantic system 10% over the next seven days. Those chances could be higher beyond that seven day period. And look at that Atlantic system just about getting itself going at the very end of that five day period. This is on the GFS model. It's the only real model that's forecasting its development. Although the ECMWF is now showing uh, a weak, broad, low pressure system uh, starting to form by day seven. That's what compelled us to label it. In the Western Pacific, we're looking at that system again uh, in the low latitudes, stays in the low latitudes throughout, uh, really struggles to develop there though. And towards the end of that five day period, it's quite a lot more disturbed weather and maybe another system trying to form it at the end there. We were considering labeling that today, but it is quite long range still and it's uncertain, but we're certainly aware that there is that second system that could form it behind it. South Pacific then, looking for this system that starts to form, well it takes its time. That's definitely the line here from the GFS model and other models not so eager on it either. And it struggles to get its circulation going there uh, at all within the five day period. So it really does appear to be a slow starter and rather large. So that's why it's probably going to struggle to get itself in order. And the wind's there very far away from the center um, and the center doesn't become properly organized even within that five day period. Well, let's look back at the Caribbean and regardless of storm development, it could be another significant rain producer, especially for Central America over the next seven days. And you'll see those rain amounts really start to increase towards the end of that five to seven day period, 14th, 15th of November. And you'll see those maximum rainfall amounts up to nine inches for parts of uh, the border region between Nicaragua and Honduras. That's uh, nearly 250 millimeters. Jamaica up and above eight inches, that's 200 millimeters. And the eastern tip of Cuba may be getting to six inches at 150 millimeters. Although worth pointing out there, the hot spot out at sea, 22 inches there, and a deviation in this potential storm's track could bring uh, those higher rainfall amounts closer to you. Well, in the longer range, day five to 10, continue watching that area and it really starts to develop and blow up, not quite as much as in the last uh, bulletin, but it does still reach hurricane status, a quite um, fragmented one, and it really struggles to keep hold of that status for very long. You can see those frontal characteristics trying to appear very early on, and I would hesitate to say that it survives much longer past Cuba there before turning post-tropical, certainly post-tropical by the end there of that 10-day uh, period. Now, Western Pacific, watching that second system start to form, and this is what a lot of people have been billing as a significant typhoon alert. Well, there it is, starting to develop within that 10-day period, becoming a very broad system, and then what happens? Well, there's a front pushing in towards it from the northwest, and that will steer it more decidedly north and northeast, and sometimes even late season, you can see those storms after they recurve as they move northeastwards, interacting uh, bioclinically, could become a, a 
pretty strong typhoon. Now this is the South Pacific, briefly reaches tropical storm status now before reaching Fiji and passing just to the south uh, and west there, very close to Nadi, continuing southwards and then turning post-tropical somewhere on the way to New Zealand. Watch again, tropical storm force winds for the western part of the main island there. I always forget which one's which, I think it's Viti Levu, and then continuing southwards and eventually southeastwards. But um, a step down from previous forecasts, now only calling for a mid-tropical storm. Scan the barcode and that will take you to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our products as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. And are still waiting for a Honeade t-shirt, which is still waiting very much to be pulled from the shelves. In silly range then, a continuation of that typhoon, as I alluded to, real strengthening there, doesn't move very much as it does so actually, becoming probably a category 4 and then moving northwards and really heading very far north for the time of year as a mature typhoon. I question whether that will be possible or not. Um, but certainly the, the area where it first reaches its strong status there, that's possible. But after that, I'm really not sure. But who knows, anything is possible. And off it goes as an extra tropical strong storm as well. Well, you can discuss all of that on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat with thousands of members from all around the world. Well then, on this day, it was November 9th, 1997, when we had a late season hurricane in the Eastern Pacific and a quite a strong one as well. Rick reaching category two status, looking very good there on that image with very high cloud tops into the minus 90s, moving northeastwards towards the coast of Mexico. We also had Tropical Storm Linda, which was just straggling into the North Indian Ocean, was about to die off after spending a few days there, and Tropical Storm 3A, which which was just reaching the coast of Somalia, the Horn of Africa, and moving gradually northwestwards, literally falling apart by this point. Back to today then, and we haven't seen any new storms in a little while. The next name on the Atlantic naming list, if we get there, is Vince. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Ramon, and in the Central Pacific, it is still Hone. 75 storms so far this year, which means we're 17 away from the annual average. Jellowat next in the Western Pacific and Mihili in the North Indian Ocean. Of course, we've seen few storms in the Western Pacific, but quite a few strong ones. In the Southern Hemisphere, the next name in the Australian region is Jasper, Southwest Indian Ocean, Alvaro, and in the South Pacific, it's Mal. That's it from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.